1967 Rose Bowl game. Featuring the Purdue University Boilermakers. Research, the University of Southern California Trojan. From the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. Brought to you by Chrysler Corporation. Of Southern California, 1967 Trojan Rose Bowl Band. And now you see the Trojans of Southern California getting ready to kick off. And you see comparative statistics also indicating that Purdue has a better pass average than uh, Southern Cal, while Southern Cal has a better game rushing total than does Purdue. Tim Rosevich will do the kicking off. And Leroy Keyes, tied for the Big Ten lead in kickoff returns, is the deep man, number 23. He's an all-purpose performer, plays offense and defense. Tim Rosevich kicks off the 67 Rose Bowl game, is now underway at the three-yard line at Keyes. To the 10, 15, 20. Leroy Keyes out to the 27-yard line. As Phil Jelancic, number 41, made the tackle, and the Boilermakers of Purdue will put the ball in play as Leroy Keyes comes off the field. First and ten for the Boilermakers, and it's Bob Greasy, number 12, who's at the helm. He led the Big Ten in total offense and in scoring, an All-American performer. Finley, number 40, to the left side, and Byrne, number 81, to the right side, in the I formation. reception record at Purdue. You can see a good deal of that uh, formation by Purdue all afternoon. There you see the uh, Purdue Boilermakers, their starting lineup, as was given a moment ago. That's the offensive unit. So it is first down and 10 yards to go now for Purdue. They have the ball at their own 27. Second down and 10 to go. They have the ball at their own 27. This time Byrne is to the left side, and there's a slot man left. And the pass is complete. To uh, Paul Sell, a halfback number 34 out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Paul Sell. And Nate Shaw came up to make the tackle, the All-American halfback number 89. Very start. That was almost a broken play. Fullback Williams bumped into Bob Gracie before uh, it was supposed to be a fake, and he's supposed to fire the ball quickly. But the delay actually helped the play. Paul Sell was wide open in the near uh, near the near sideline in the flat zone, as you saw. First and ten now for the Boilermakers. That's Bob Greasy. Ball is at the Purdue 40. Greasy now retreating. Samuels out. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. As he stopped for no game by Dennis Moore and Ray May. May is number 67. Senior defensive end from Los Angeles. Dennis Moore is number 71, a senior defensive tackle from Los Angeles. So it is second and ten now at the 40-yard line. For Southern Cal, the front five defensively, Tim Rosevich, 88, Gary Magner, 75, Larry Petrel, 61, Dennis, 471, Ray May, 67. There you see Bob Greasy's uh, statistics, attempts, completions, 130 completions for a 604 percentage, a 60 is a little better than 60 percent, and 12 touchdowns. The most valuable man in the Big Ten Conference, Bob Greasy. And he got the ball sell, and he picks up three to the 43. It'll be third down. Seven as Larry Petrel, the middle guard, number 61. From Redondo came in to make the tackle. Linebackers at Jim Snow, 55. Adrian Young, 50. Eddie King, 46 at the Rover. Nate Shaw, 89 at halfback. Bill Jurancic, 41 at halfback. And Pat Cashman, number 30, is the safety man. This 1967 Rose Bowl game is being brought to you live and in color, exclusively on NBC from Pasadena, California. Retreats, rolls out, goes on the run, and completes to the 46-yard line. Taken by Jim Finley, his flanker back. So it's going to be a first and ten for Purdue in Southern Cal territory at the Trojan 46. Purdue is trying to flood the zone on the far sideline. Here you see it on the replay. Jim 
Finley all alone in there. Most of them are trying to cover either too deep or cover Jim Byrne, number 81. Uh, Purdue was trying to flood that zone on the far sidelines, and they uh, succeeded in, in uh, overloading the defense. Line before Larry Petzl and Joe Jurassic brought him down. It's at the 39. Again, it's seven yards on the play. It is second and three. Very Williams, 689 yards uh, this season, 3.8 average and eight touchdowns. Fine running fullback for Purdue, number 47, as you see him. Now this time, both Finley and Byrne are flanked to the left side. Or Southern Cal. Bob Greasy coming right back. Southern Cal overloaded the defense uh, the last time on the far sidelines for Purdue was strong to the right. This time they came back strong to the left. Greasy anticipated they would overload the defense to the left side, but they did not. When he ran back to the right side, it was stopped cold by Southern Cal. It is seldom that Purdue set Finley and Byrne to the same side, but they did. They lost the yard. It's third and four. Now Greasy. And it is complete to the tight end, Marion Griffin, number 83. And it's a first down for Purdue inside the 30-yard line at the 29. Griffin is number 83. There you can see Southern Cal figuring in that situation to double cover Finley, double cover, uh, cut double cover Burn, and maybe you can stop that Purdue passing attack. And Bob Greasy very wisely elected to hit Griffin, number 83, for the first down. I saw it just gone out. Eddie King's come back in at the rover back defensively. Cashman made the last tackle for Southern Cal. Burn, Burn, Burn! It's a Williams on the 47, trying to make the cut and then stumbles on forward. Carry to the 25 before Adrian Young got to him. Oh! And a four, it's going to be second down and six yards to go. For the Boilermakers of Purdue, that's Perry Williams from Cincinnati, Ohio. He's a sophomore, 193 pounder. A warm and sunny day in Pasadena, California for the playing of the Rose Bowl game. And from the Goodyear Bluff, you see the panoramic spectacle of the Rose Bowl full of people. Harry <laughs> Williams again. He's inside the 20 and keeps going. Harry Williams driving for it before Bill Garantic and Pat Cashman can bring him down. First down and 10 to go at the 13 yard line. Uh, Perry Williams is only 193 pounds, which seems small for a big-time fullback, which he is. He runs like a 220-pounder, and he looks even bigger. We watched him on the practice field a couple of times, and he's a big, strong boy. We are belying his size, and he just carries men with him, as he did on that last play. Now Finley has come out of the ballgame, and Leroy Keyes is in there offensively. Leroy Keyes, number 23, is in, and Finley is out. First and 10 at the 13-yard line. In close to Williams. He keeps going, but he's thrown back before he gets to the 10-yard line. Adrian Young. And we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is Lindsey Nelson with Terry Bennett at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. Purdue playing for the first time in the Rose Bowl, for the first time in any bowl. Second and eight at the Southern Cal, 11-yard line. Now the quick hit. And it's Leroy he is out of the line of finish by Ray May, the senior defensive right end. No game. At the moment, Bob Greasy has completed three passes out of four attempts for 34 yards. We mentioned that because it's third down and big yardage, about eight or maybe a little less than that. So he might have to go to the air to keep, the, to keep this drive alive. Dave Herrick comes into the ballgame. Leroy Keyes comes off the field now for Purdue. Herrick, a fine blocker. The ball and I can try to move the ball on third down. It's third and eight. Byrne is flipped to the right side. That's Bob Breezy. Goes to Byrne. Dives right at the five yard line and makes the catch. It is not a first down. It's short of the first down. It'll be fourth. Bill Jurancic made the tackle. It'll be fourth down and about two yards to go. Jim Finley is the holder for Purdue when uh, Greasy attempts a field goal. At the moment, he's on the sidelines uh, right next to Coach Jack Mollenkopf. Purdue is taking a timeout. Action will continue here at the Rose Bowl. The score is Purdue nothing and SC nothing. 
at the Rose Bowl. The Purdue Boilermakers have the ball. Fourth down and two yards to go. They have it the five-yard line of Southern Cal. What do you do? You go for the field goal? Do you go for the first down? Do you try to get it into the end zone? There is no score in the game. We're in the first quarter. Eight minutes, six seconds remain to be played in this period. The Boilermakers are in their huddle. Bob Greasy calling plays in the huddle, and here they come to go for it on fourth down. Just two to go. Southern Cal moves to the tent now. They're running from a power eye formation. Greasy saw it. Fine defensive play by Jurancic. He was all over Byrne. He anticipated the play very well. And it might look like passing the pass to some, but he was making a bona fide effort for the ball, and he has as much right to the ball as does the receiver. And so the Trojans have the ball, and John Charles is in there defensively, starting in his unit for Purdue. He's been on the injury list, but he's starting in the Rose Bowl. Winslow handing the ball up this time to Don McCall. McCall moving it out to the 10-yard line. Mike Burke, number 68, makes the tackle. There's the offensive lineup now for the Trojans of Southern California. Southern Cal has not had the benefit of John McCall all season long. When he has been in there, he's been a great one. He possesses great speed. He runs a 100-yard dash in less than 10 seconds. A good, strong runner, so he's a big asset for him this afternoon. Roy Winslow is at the helm, the I formation. That's McCall again, off the tail of the tandem, moving for three yards to the 13. It'll be third down and two yards to go. This Wednesday, don't miss, codename Heraclitus, starring Stanley Baker, Sherry Norris, Jack Weston, and Leslie Nelson, when Bob Hope presents the Chrysler Theater, Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. First down did not get that as John Charles, number 25 from Linden, New Jersey, made the tackle. Roy Winslow in the forward touch department has completed 70 of 121 for a percentage of 580. Five touchdowns. He is the most accurate passer in the history of coaching football. He is beside his head coach, John McKay. Fourth down and deep punt formation is. Pat Cashman. Gets it out, and Charles Service is waiting. Service at his 43, and he fouled up at the 42. Fine kick coverage by the Trojans of Southern Cal as McCall and Lawrence came down to make the tackle. It'll be first and 10 with the ball spotted at the 43-yard line. Dennis Serby is from Cleveland, Ohio, fielding that one. Actual will continue here at the Rose Bowl. The score is Purdue nothing, Southern Cal nothing. From our Goodyear Blimp, a good look at the Rose Bowl. When the Trojans were on offense, you saw fullback Mike Hurl injure his leg on the first play, and Homer Williams was in there at fullback for him. But now the Boilermakers have the ball, first and 10 at their own 43. Greasy handing it off. Hit by Jerry Mountain. 215 pounds tackle from Costa Mesa, California. No game. Second 10. Since Southern Cal stopped Purdue down near the goal line, they've taken a little bit more heart. Uh, during the course of the season, over 10 game season, the statistical edge would go to Southern Cal on defense. However, as you mentioned, uh, Purdue in the last three games in the Big Ten only had one touchdown scored against them. They've run 15 plays of three for Southern Cal so far. Finley is flanked far to the right side. Greasy. Goes back. And it is Adrian Young moving over as Marion Griffin is the man who made the grab for Purdue. And it's across the 50-yard line at the 48-yard line of SC. 
Southern Cal's basic defense is a five-man line, two inside linebackers, a roving linebacker, which would be uh, Eddie King, number 46, and the three deep. And they've been favoring, they've been favoring both uh, Byrne or Finley, but paying little attention to Griffin. And you saw the Goodyear blimp from above, where we're getting the panoramic shots, and that is the first down, but there's a penalty mark is thrown. Rossi is making the tackle. Paul Cal picking up the first down. Illegal procedure, I guess. Purdue will nullify the apparent first down. And it'll cost the Boilermakers five yards as Bob Greasy comes over to question the official Jack Springer. The referee there indicating illegal procedure and a five-yard penalty. So it'll be third down and six now. The world's most famous floral parade, the 78th Annual Tournament of Roses, was a dazzling spectacle this morning. Reaching 60 floats, 22 bands, 250 equestrian units. The theme was travel tales and flowers. The Grand Marshal was Janat Komen, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Thailand, adding to the event's international flavor were the entries from Canada, Hong Kong, Ireland, Mexico, and Thailand, plus the presence of Mr. Terence Brenner. <laughs> Third and six now for the Boilermakers. Bartusi travels away. Now throws. And it's the 49-line. It is a first down for the Boilermakers. All Twitter Byrne made the catch. Jim Byrne, and it is at the 37-yard line. Gibson replay, NBC Gibson replay, with slow motion. There you see Jim Byrne, 81, making his cut. He's wide open, and Greasy doing a great job of getting free at the moment to throw the ball. He has to slow down, as you can see, to catch it. And then he's swarmed under by Pat Cassidy. Come out, first and ten for the Boilermakers. Let's see, 37. Purdue swarming right back here in the first quarter. This time they play a draw play. And Williams carries to the 34-yard line with the clock showing three minutes, 45 seconds left to play in this period. Adrian Young and Dennis Moore made the tackle. Then a three at second down and seven yards to go. Larry Williams is number 47. Now Ralph Oliver, number 53, comes in at middle guard defensively for seven. Calvin Larry Petrol comes out. They have Byrne and Finley, both flanked to the right side. Give the ball off to set. And the play moves to the 30 with Bob Balsell from Louisville, Kentucky, carrying for four yards. Ralph Oliver, number 53, making the tackle. We asked Bob Greasy this morning, and pointed out to him that he's been a marked man in every game so far, and also in today's game, and asked him if it was of any concern to him. <laughs> Lindsay, it's been that way for, uh, like you said, the last year at least, and uh, it's sort of hard to do well when it's expected of you, but uh, you go out there and just try and play your, the best you can and play consistently in constant football, and you really don't think about that because you it's expected, and uh, these are something you have to live with, and it's just a burden put on your shoulders, and there's good, good parts about this, and there's bad parts, and that's only bad parts. So Bob Greasy held on to the football right there and moved to the 24-yard line for a first down. First down, Purdue, and Larry Petzl moved in to make the tackle. A little guessing game going out there. The play before, Greasy noticed that they were single cut, uh, Southern Cal was single covering Byrne and Finley, so he came right back with the pass into that area. However, Southern Cal changed the defense and had three men out there to stop the area, plug it up. So he was forced to run, and run he did and pick up the first down. And Southern Cal asks for a timeout here. Lots of excitement and lots of noise here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. Talk about ball control. At the moment, uh, Purdue has run 20 offensive plays to just three for Southern Cal. So they're doing a very effective job of uh, throttling Southern Cal's offense, uh, limiting the three plays and a punt. Two minutes, six seconds remaining in the first quarter. Once the Purdue Boilermakers drove down to the five-yard line and lost the ball on downs, but they've come storming back first and ten at the 24. Pulled down by Ray May at the 20-yard line. May had been shaken up on the play before, but the timeout was taken, and apparently fully recovered. 
Purdue University has a great athletic tradition. It's won more Big Ten basketball championships than any other conference member. It's won nine Big Ten golf championships in the past 15 years. Was NCAA champion in 1961. Under Jack Mollenkopf, all the Maker football teams have finished in the first division down to the past 10 seasons. Well, Dow moving to the 17 yard line. It'll be third and three, Eddie King and Ray May making the tackle. The clock is running now with one minute, 20 seconds remaining to be played in the first quarter. There's no score. You look into the Purdue huddle. Bob Balcell, uh, Purdue halfback, broke into the starting lineup on offense about midway through the season. And since then, the Purdue offense has certainly steadied itself down. And they've become a very fine football team. For the second time today, Purdue takes a timeout. The Purdue scoring leaders this season, Bob Greasy leading with 81, Terry Williams 54, Jim Byrne 50. Bob Greasy so far in this ball game has attempted eight passes, completed six to 65 yards. Third down and three now for the ball to make it up to 17 of SP. It's a first down for do as the ball is at the 13 yard line. It would appear in that play that uh, the Southern Cal defense was slamming, and then the linebackers, the two inside linebackers, were keying off Williams, the fullback, and they went the wrong way because it was a cross bus type play with the ball finally being handed off to Ball Zell and he picked up the first down. Once before, Padu was at the five yard line. Now they're at the 13. Second remaining in the first quarter of this football game. This is Terry Williams. Gets to the 10 yard line. Stopped by Gary Magner and Tim Rosevich. Rosevich from Mount View, California. Second down and seven yards to go now. Once again, the uh, Southern Cal defense closed very fast on Williams, so we could anticipate an outside move with a fake to Williams on the inside and possible pitch out to Ball Zell because he looked wide open on the outside. And the clock is running with 10 seconds remaining in the quarter. Ball Sell, hitting into the seven-yard line. By Solness and Bill Jaronsi combined on the tackle, and there's the gun ending the period. That's the end of the first quarter in the 1967 Rose Bowl game with the score, Purdue nothing, USC nothing. We asked Jim Byrne of Purdue if he thought he could break away from SC pass defenders such as the great Nate Shaw. So, but I don't think we'll run too many deep patterns because they play mostly on zone defense, which the middle safety you know, plays deep, and uh, and I doubt very much that we will try. But on the other hand, if it's fair, I'll take it. Leroy Keyes to the four-yard line. Tim Rosovich bringing him down. Purdue thus far in this football game has scored or made eight first downs to none for Southern Cal, and they've had, they've had the ball 25 offensive plays to three for Southern Cal. And they're going to measure for a possible first down here. It's either first or it's fourth again. So take a careful look at this chain in his stretch. Bob Greasy, number 12, is up there to look. And it lacks that much. About a yard. Fourth down and a yard to go. Once before, the Boilermakers had the ball at the five-yard line. They tried a fourth down play. They needed two yards and didn't get it. Now they're at the four-yard line. They need one. And here comes Herrick back in there. Dave Herrick, number 21, coming in. And Leroy Keyes comes out. With Jim Finley on the bench, uh, it would appear that they are not going to go for the field goal. Oh, once again on fourth down, they're going to try to pick up the first down. Ball still on the field of the tandem and Williams in front of them. And it is a first down for them. And Perry Williams piled in there. Perry Williams piling in. Matt Cashman coming up to meet him, and it's a first down and goal they go. This 1967 Rose Bowl game is being brought to you live and in color exclusively on NBC from Pasadena, California. There you see the number of plays once again. Purdue has run 26 to 3 for Southern Cal. Harry Williams. And the ball goes to the one yard line. Paul Zell and Williams running in the eye formation. Eddie King along with Gary Magner making the tackle. It is second down and goal to go now at the one yard line. We're in the second quarter. There's no score, but the Boilermakers of Purdue 
And knocking at the touchdown door in Southern Cal, digging in the defense here. Greasy takes a look around now. And it is Terry Williams, and he is pushed back at the goal line. Jim Marshall is number 88. Moving into stopping, it's going to be third down and goal to go. And Purdue still is not in that end zone. Southern Cal in their goal line defense is the oh, gap oh, six. They have all the gaps covered from end to end by Purdue. They have two corner men, two halfbacks that are practically on the goal line, and the middle linebacker who slides with the quarterback. So running straight ahead off guard or tackle is pretty, pretty difficult. And you've seen Purdue have difficulty in the last couple of plays. So with a foot to go, let's see what they do. Again, they have Williams and Balsall in the eye. And it's Williams. And he's in for a touchdown. Department. He's 33 for 37 this season. The snap to Finley. The kick by Greasy is up the stretch. And so, action will continue here at the Rose Bowl. The score is Purdue 7 and Southern Cal Nothing. This season for SC, Rod Chairman with 32, Don McGraw 24, Ron Blake, who is ineligible for postseason play at 24, and Troy Winslow 18. It's going to be now Leroy Keith, number 23, kicking off. Don McCall, number 36, and Jim Warren, number 28 on the deep end, McCall at the top of your screen. Lawrence, Fielder, at the 14, 15, 20, 25, 30, and Lawrence going to the 33 yard line before Dick Marble. Major Walker, Indiana, brought him down. So the Trojans of Southern Cal now get the ball. They had it very sparingly in the first quarter of this football game. And coming up next on NBC after this game, from the Orange Bowl, Florida versus Georgia Tech. John Charles, number 25. Sherman received 35 passes this year for 343 yards and two touchdowns. That's he number 12. They haven't had a chance to see Purdue on defense too often this afternoon, but they're playing uh, most of the time that they've done a defense, a six-man front, middle linebacker, four deep, and they will rotate toward the flanker or rotate toward the wide side, and they interchange their safety. Sometimes the safety man will move up uh, close to the line of scrimmage in the short zone once or the next time. Troy Winslow running the option and finally pitching to Don McCall, and he is hit right at the line of scrimmage for no game. Frank Burke, number 68, from Derby, New York, made the tackle. Don McCall has gained 474 yards this year, averaging 4.4 per carry, and he had four touchdowns, injured a good deal in the late part of the season. Bob Holmes, number 93, the right end for Purdue, did a great job of stringing that play out to help set up the tackle uh, for the rest of the defensive men. Third and three here for the Trojans. And he goes complete. And Lawrence, and Lawrence, the speaker, is now at the 22 right line before he's finally pulled down at the 21. Jim Wallace starts the tablet, brought him down. First and 10 for the coaches at the Purdue, 21. So you see it an instant. It's been replay. There goes Lawrence. Jim Lawrence out of the flat zone. He stumbled momentarily. He's very, very fast. There you see it. Now he's on his way trying to set up his blockers, but uh, Purdue pursuit finally overtook him. Jim Lawrence has been playing behind Rod Sherman all year long. And now that Sherman's moved out to the split end of flanker spot, it gives him an opportunity to go. A 39-yard pass play that moves the Trojans deep into Purdue's territory. 
It's just Troy Winslow keeping, and he moves to the 18-yard line for a gain of three. You saw Lawrence move that ball down after receiving the pass. He's a 9-6 sprinter. McCall goes in 9-7. Sherman goes in 9-8. And in the sprints, Mike Call outran the ball. Mike Powell hurt his leg in the first play of the game. It isn't in there. He is a fine football player. We saw him against UCLA. Six foot four, and he can really go. Second down and seven now for the Turkish. Ball off the tail of the hand. Powell's his way. And the 10-yard line. A first down SP. Leroy sees him. John Carl bringing him down at the 10-yard line. Sometimes uh, what appears to be a problem... Uh, is actually a blessing in disguise with the loss of Ron Drake, the prime receiver. They decided to put Rod Sherman out on the flank, and by doing so, they've given an opportunity to John McCall, who was injured, injured his knee earlier in the year, and Jim Lawrence, too, fine backs, and as Lindsay mentioned to you, that this puts great speed not only in the running back department, but out on the flank. Now it's first down, and he has to go just outside the 10-yard line, inches outside. McCall, runs for a loss of the yard. Young Kyle, number 60, the sophomore middle guard for the Purdue Bordermakers. He's from Fort Thomas, Kentucky. So it's going to be second down at 11 at the 11-yard line. Purdue leading by a score of 7 and 8. Purdue has scored 11 points in this game. Eight minutes, 44 seconds remaining to be played in the first half of this football game. Purdue leading by a score of 7 and 8. Purdue leading by a score of 7 and 8. Purdue leading by a Back in there now with Sherman out of the ball game at the moment for FC. Troy Winslow rolling. good hard rush on Troy Winslow and hopeful that uh, that rush would be hard enough and fast enough so that the defensive backs would not have to cover the receivers too long. Well, that play had worked out very well. Coach John McKay of SC has sent Rod Sherman back in now and he's flanked part of the right side. Jim Lawrence is out of the lineup. And now Finley Marker is thrown and the across the surgeon. Five yards for a delay of game. That'll make it third and 21 at the 21. Delay of game, says referee Jack Springer. <laughs> These Trojans of SC won their first six games this year before being defeated by Miami in Miami. They came back to defeat Cal and then lost to UCLA and the season finale to Notre Dame. Rod Sherman, Mike Ford on the right side. Troy Winslow, wins this one out. The ball, the ball, at the check. The call fumbles the ball, and it is recovered by Purdue, by John Charles at Purdue at the nine-yard line. That is John Charles, number 25. We had an NBC instant replay. Number 36 is John McCall, Southern California. Swings out to his left. Roy Winslow hit him. He's a dangerous runner. He had picked up 10 to 11 yards there. You see him lose the ball. The man scrambled for it, and Purdue comes up with it. First and ten now for the Boilermakers at the nine-yard line. They lead by a score of seven-nothing. Bob Greasy. Almost intercepted by Tim Rasevich. Number 88, Tim Rasevich almost had an SC touchdown. That would have been a, a free one from the one-yard line. The heads-up play on the part of Rasevich. A good uh, defensive lineman when he's rushing the pass. If he can't quite get through the passes, the next best thing is to get those hands up as high as he can to try to block the view and maybe deflect the pass as Rasevich did there. Now number 81, Jim Byrne is split to the left side and Jim Finley, number 40, is flanked to the right side. Harry Williams, number 47, powering his way forward. He got to the 14-yard line before Adrian Young, number 50, made the stop. 
Pasadena became the world's beauty capital. In this season, and it annually sent forth its greetings for the new year. The spectacular beauty of freshly cut Midwinter flowers was witnessed today by many millions in the USA, Canada, and Mexico through the magic of television. Beginning in 1890, the parade of flowers has been staged for the past 78 years to herald the beginning of the new year. This is Terry Williams, and he's still for a loss by Tim Rosovich, the junior defensive end of our team number 88. Rosovich on the tackle, and a loss back to the 11-yard line. Fourth and eight for the Boilermakers out for you. Guess who does the punting? Bob Greasy, number 12, who has averaged 33.9 for the season. That is Jim Lawrence, number 28, who is back here deep to receive the punt for SC. Bob Greasy gets the kick away. Lawrence moving up, calls for a fair catch, and makes the catch at the Purdue 44-yard line, where it's first and 10 SC. Great field position for Southern Cal. First Action time. will continue here at the Rose Bowl. The score is Purdue 7, SC nothing. John McKay, the head coach of SC, along the sideline. When he came out of the service, he had played high school football before going in. He went to Purdue, and freshman were eligible. He played there one year at Purdue and then transferred to Oregon, where he finished. This is his seventh season as head coach at Southern Cal. First and ten for his coaches at the Purdue 44. Troy Winslow handing off to Don McCall, and McCall sidesets his way to the 39-yard line before Chuck Kyle, a sophomore middle guard number 60, brought him down. Second and five. Since its founding in 1895, the Big Ten has been a leader and innovator among collegiate conferences with such commissioners as Major John Griffith, Tug Wilson, and Bill Reed. The Big Ten has a distinguished record as a pace setter in intercollegiate athletics, as well as a rugged competitor on the field. A call is in motion. Troy Winslow goes on the run, and it is complete to the 32-yard line. Taken by Jim Wallace, and John Charles made the tackle. In instant replay, Jim Lawrence, number 28, all alone on the right flat, picked up big yardage. He had that zone cleaned out uh, pretty well for him by Cahill, number 26. It is first and 10 for the Trojans. It is at the 31 and a half yard line. You see Winslow taking the line. Homer Williams moves through to the 27 yard line. The Trojans did not have the use of Homer Williams this season, but they have him back here for the bowl game. He's number 44. Dennis Serby made the tackle. Troy Winslow has completed four out of four for 66 yards, so he's going to rival Bob Greasy as to who's going to be the most outstanding passer in this football game today. He's done it for the last couple of years. He was hurt that the game against Notre Dame missed most of it and missed about half of the UCLA, but he's a fine quarterback, Troy Winslow. As a junior against Washington, he hit 11 for 11. Troy Winslow, number 10. Overthrow is his intended receiver. Who is Bob Miller, number 86. Leroy Keyes covering defensively. There's Miller going back to the huddle. USC's athletic excellence extends well beyond its fine football program. Southern Cal has won 41 NCAA team titles more than any other collegiate institution. Its greatest year was 1962-63 when it won five national championships in football, swimming, tennis, baseball, and track and field. Alternating them. It's first down and 10 yards to go for the Trojans. 
Purdue is leading by a score of 7 and I think we're in the second quarter at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. It's Homer Williams from the 44. He battles through to the 13-yard line. And Conley from Azusa, California brought him down. Homer Williams is number 44 playing in place of Mike Hall, who is injured on the first half of his play today for Southern Cal. Second out and three yards to go now for the Trojans. They want to get on that scoreboard. We have three minutes, 28 seconds remaining to be played in the first half. Down the calls in motion, and Homer Williams gets the football. Look at him go all the way down to the three-yard line. Homer Williams, number 44. By Winslow and or Coach John McKay, probably Coach John McKay sending in instructions. They are strong to the near sideline, and then they send them in in motion to make sure the Purdue rotation is the defense is on this side, and they've been popping over Williams, as you've seen it, twice off the right side. That last one almost all the way in there for the score. Homer Williams, a senior fullback from Long Beach, California, first and goal to the three-yard line. Troy Winslow turns around and asks for a little quiet. Referee Jack Springer indicating to the fans that they want a little quiet so they can hear the starting signals. by Southern Cal. The last one, they were not as fortunate. Purdue recovered it. This has been uh, some of their problems throughout uh, this fall. A few bad breaks, or bad penalties, or fumbles at the wrong time. Homer Williams and Don McCall standing in the eye. This is McCall. Piled up toward the goal line. Don McCall off the tail of a tandem and the Purdue defense jacked him up. George Katavlis, the co-captain from Cleveland, Ohio. And Frank Burke from Derby, New York. Third down. Goal to go. Inches away. You see how close it is. And he's down three, four, seven, Cal from that eye from eight to ten. Big Homer Williams, 225 pound fullback ahead of him. And then gives the ball to McCall. Leroy Cruz is very outspoken. Looks like he pulled a muscle as he's lifting off. It doesn't look too serious. He hoped not. 
We saw him earlier in the fall against Michigan State. He broke one kickoff. He was out in the open all alone, and then pumping with his arms, he dropped the ball, and uh, Michigan State recovered. And then he ran another one past midfield for being hit and stopped. That was a 42-yard return. As you see, he's getting a little attention now. Leroy Keyes is along the Purdue sideline. First and 10 for the Michigan. It's a spot. Going long to burn, and it's incomplete across the sideline. Second down and 10 yards to go. Eddie King covering defensively. This coming Saturday, be sure to see the world premiere of How I Spent My Summer Vacation, starring Robert Wagner, Jill San John, Peter Lawford, and many others. That's the world premiere this Saturday at 9 p.m. 8 Central Time here on NBC. Marion Griffin, number 83, coming off the field. He's been replaced by Rick Rubel, number 88. Second and ten for the Boilermakers. The score is tied here at the Rose Bowl, 7-7. Seven, seven. Vernon Finley, both to the right side. Vernon is spitting Finley's flag. Reese is rolling and setting. And throwing into the Gary Magner putting the pressure on him. Southern Cal is doing a great job of teaching up on defense. They'll be playing man-to-man -man one time, then they'll slide the secondary around completely and play at zone, so it's making it a little difficult for Bob Greasy. At the moment, Bob Greasy has thrown 11 times, completed 6 for 65 yards. Troy Winslow, on the other hand, for Southern Cal, has completed 5 out of 6 for 73 yards. So at the moment, anyway, Winslow's gained a few more yards and has a little better percentage in passing. And the clock shows 49 seconds remaining to be played in the first half with a score tied 7-7. Third down play here. Greasy up and pitches incomplete over for him. Fourth down. In that play, Southern Cal really wound up with a two-deep defense, and they had nine men, combination of linemen and linebackers, very close to the line of scrimmage. They were crowding a great deal, and uh, as you saw, Greasy had to hurry his throw. Southern Cal came into this game without having a punter who had ever kicked in a ball game. They've had to punt only one time and Cashman punted dead. They lost their regular kicker, who was a junior college transfer, as they lost nine ball players because of the transfer rule and ineligibility for postseason play. Bob Greasy now gets a high pass, kicks on the run. Greasy in deep punt formation to the 25 and it rolls back to Wallace. It's a big thing. Number 28, Perry Williams, bouncing him out. So the coach of the Southern Cal will get the ball. First down and 10 yards to go, and they will have it at their own 23-yard line. Today's college student athlete is first to find student. He must be in order to compete in the classroom and to meet the ever-increasing academic pressure of American universities. Actually, in both the Big Ten and Pacific Eight, the athlete must receive substantially better grades to participate than are required just to remain in school. 46-yard punt, returned 11 yards now. Second remaining to be played in the half. Troy Winslow, giving this one off. Moving back and he's got to the 38-yard line. Dennis Kirby and Leroy T. bring him down. Timeout is called to stop this punt. Timeout for the first and it's the instant replay, end zone camera. Trap play, down the ball, watch it fly, down. Southern Cal has a great, great job to left and almost break uh, the last tackle. He would have gone all the way had he done so. That was a 16-yard gain by Don McCall. Action will continue here at the Rose Bowl. The score is Purdue 7 and SC 7. This is Lindsey Nelson with Terry Brennan at the world-famous Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. Southern Cal has the ball first and ten at their own 38. Score tied 7-7. Seven, seven. Ball's in motion. Corey Winslow giving it off to Homer Williams. He picked up a yard in front of And George Olean from East St. Louis, Illinois, brought him down. Five out. Timeout call again, and the clock is stopped with 18 seconds remaining. SC dropping the clock. And that way is a big rollout attempt by Troy Winslow and the Southern Cal team, trying to get the defensive left end up through to move out with them and then give it to their fullback or halfback up on the inside. So we're probably going to anticipate with them closing hard, possibly either the rollout pattern or a pass pattern off of them. There you see Coach John McKay shading his eyes. 
Homer Williams getting a little attention there. Mike Hull was injured on the first play of the ball game, the number one fullback. Homer Williams, the number two fullback, shaken up here. And John McKay is a very interested onlooker there. This was founding in 1959. The Pacific Eight has enjoyed dramatic success in national competition. During those seven years, the Pacific Eight has won 28 national titles, more than twice the total of any other conference. The championships have come in nine different sports. Another good indication of the Pacific Eight's strength and balance. Second down, nine yards to go now for the Trojans of SC. 18 seconds showing on the clock in the first half. Yes. Six four two twenty. There you see from the NBC instant replay. The end zone camera. Twenty eight more in front of him. He uh, blacked out momentarily. There you see it. Mike Hall, number twenty three, cut back to the inside, and just a momentary hesitation down here, a little bit of stumbling. He might have broke it all the way. A fine football player. That leg that he hurt on the first play of the game does look like it's bothering him very much now. Once again, number twenty three, Mike Hall. That was a thirty five yard gain. Jerry Hayo and Jim Holman combined to spring him out into the open, and did he ever ramble? As we told you in the sprint of the SC squad, he outran everybody. So now Southern Cal has the ball. First down, 10 yards to go, and they have it at the Purdue 25-yard line. The clock is stopped with eight seconds remaining to be played in the first half of the score side here, 7-7. Seven, seven. The SC huddle, Boy Winslow calling plays in the huddle. Jim Rossovich limbering up the leg now. It's going to be Winslow holding. Rossovich will kick. A 32-yard line will make it a 42-yard attempt. A 42-yard attempt as the ball goes down and it's booted. And it is short. Going underneath the crossbar. Underneath the crossbar. Two seconds show on the clock. Purdue gets the ball first and 10 at the 20-yard line. It was long enough and true enough, it wasn't high enough. Touch back, brings the ball out. So now the Boilermakers get it with the story tied 7 7. Time to run a play. Probably was just uh, run a quarterback sneak. It can't be much in two seconds. Doubt very much that he'd go for a long bomb in this situation, but you can't tell. Bob Breezy races out to join the rest. And to call the play on the huddle. <laughs> and he runs the quarterback sneak, wedges him out for three yards as the gun goes off. Three yards wedges the three yards on the last play of the half. So that's the end of the first half of the 1967 Rose Bowl game with the score, Purdue 7, USC 7. The Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, on a warm and sunny afternoon with more than 100,000 fans jammed into the world-famous stadium, and we've had a rip-roaring first half of football here with the Trojans of Southern Cal hanging in with the favored Boilermakers of Purdue. We'll have halftime entertainment here by both bands. here certainly uh, make this a marvelous uh, presentation and I know you must be extremely proud to represent the Big Ten and bring your representative team to Pasadena, California on New Year's Day or the day after perennially. Oh yes, Leonard. I don't think that there is in all of America or for that matter in all the world a spectacle quite like that which is provided by the Tournament of Roses and then superimposed upon it uh, all the glamour of college football. We're seeing a great deal of it out here right now with that tremendous Purdue band. It, it, uh, it simply is breathtaking. Bill, I know that you've been under the weather the last day or two, and your fans from coast to coast, I'm sure, are delighted to hear your voice. We wish you a happy new year. Congratulations on this great special. Thank you very much, Julius. Bill Reed, the distinguished commissioner, 
of the Western Conference is now down on the field, the Purdue Band. Sixty-seven Trojan Rose Bowl Band continues its performance of pageant and precision now to the stirring music of Richard Rogers. Victory at sea. Referee Jack Springer to start the second half with the score tied. Seven-seven. Easy is number twenty-three. There's the whistle. He's pushed it down to Lawrence at the one yard line. Lawrence to the five, to and 15. Lawrence to the 20, and he gets out to the 23 yard line. Well, it'll be first and 10. Brought down by John Charles and Bob Mangine, number 33 from Peru, Indiana. A 21 yard return. Roy Winslow, number 10, the quarterback. McCall is in motion. Homer Williams throws the block, and Winslow throws the ball to Rod Simmons. And he is out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Bob Corby, number 45, covering defensively. Rod Sherman, number 12, fine receiver, running back and receiver for USC. There you see Rod Sherman, number 12, on the flank. Down about eight, out into the flat zone. Perfect pass, good catch, and good have time to turn up field, but a big gain. Second out, about two and a half yards to go. That time is John McCall with a second effort. He moves it out very close to the first down and may very well have picked it up. The referee, Jack Springer, will tell us about that. And it is a first down for SC. One of the effective formations for USC has been a flanker to one side, for example, to the far sideline from their eyes and then get in their eye formation. They force the do to slide the secondary to cover that pattern, and then they send the deep man in the eye and motion the other way to force through to balance off their defensive alignment, and that puts man-for-man coverage on their top receiver. Leroy T. is who injured his leg in the first half is not in the defensive alignment as we start the second half for the Coast. Troy Winslow, keeping down, trying to turn the corner, 
But he is pulled down by George Olea, number 87, a junior, 196 pound in from East St. Louis, Illinois. This 1967 Rose Bowl game is being brought to you live and in color, exclusively on NBC from Pasadena, California. The ball is at the 47 yard line. And he had a run of 17 yards by John McCall to play before. He's the leading ground leader for uh, USC and both teams, for that matter. He has 55 yards and 10 attempts. Second and 13 for the Trojans with a score tied 7 7. Troy Winslow. Playing this one out, and it is complete to line. He goes out of bounds at the 47 yard line at Purdue. John Charles again on the tackle. A great performer from Linden, New Jersey, who made a couple of All-American teams despite the fact that he missed half the season with an injury. And the Goodyear Blimp hovers over the Rose Bowl, providing the panoramic pictures that we see from time to time here today, such as that one right there. USC, once again, that was their favorite uh, offensive formation. Strong right, and then their deep man of the eye, deep back to the left side, he was wide open. Third and seven with Rod Sherman flanked to the right side. And then a handoff going to Don McCall, who moves to the 45-yard line. Gain of two, it's going to be fourth and five now. Cashman comes into the ball game. A punting situation. Coming up next on NBC, the Orange Bowl game with Florida. Featuring Steve Spurrier, the Heisman Trophy winner, and Lenny Snow, a great running back opposing him on behalf of Georgia Tech. Jackman in deep one formation. They pull two tackles back and team him with the fullback to protect the kicker. It's in his survey. He's waiting for Purdue. Got it off just barely. It's on the 20. It is a Southern Cal roll going inside the 10. And it is down at the 9-yard line. Mike Burke was the man who got in there and almost blocked that one and may have got a little bit of his hand on it. Don McCall downfield to cover the ball. Don McCall with the SB man to down the ball. Break block two kicks during the regular season. One setting up the Michigan win. A 36-yard butt for Cashman. Action will continue here at the Rose Bowl. The score is Purdue 7 and Southern Cal 7. Purdue 7, USC 7 in the third quarter with 12 minutes remaining to be played in this period. First and 10 for the Boilermakers on their own nine. Hurst is in that backfield now for Purdue. And it's Terry Williams moving it out to the 11-yard line. Before Tim Rosovich and Bill Jaronsic bring him down. Again, a two. It's going to be second down. And eight yards to go. Williams going back to the huddle with plays called there by Bob Greasy, who has started every game for Purdue in the past three seasons. And over that stretch, the Boilermakers have won 21, lost seven, and tied one. Greasy, during his career, has had a completion average of better than 60%. That's Greasy, number 12, keeping this time. Hit and hit hard as he got to about the 14-yard line by Dennis Moore, number 71, a 231-pound senior tackle for Southern Cal. Southern Cal does a great job on the wide coverage on defense. Their pursuit and their speed is excellent. First to come out of the ballgame, and Finley is back in now at the flanker post for Purdue. A big third down play here. Lucy is setting up the throw, up the middle, and Byrne makes it. the ball at the 22-yard line. Down and 10 to go for Purdue. Pat Cashman made the tackle. Right down by the turn. He gets knocked down. In NBC slow motion. Watson just barely catch the ball and he, he gets hit and hit hard. Number 30, that's Pat Cashman, safety man for Southern Cal, doing most of the damage. Getting an assist from Adrian Young. So it's first and 10 with the ball at the 22 yard line at Purdue and the tied 7 7. Greasy up the middle again and incomplete. His target, Jim Byrne, once again. Brock stopped on the incompleted pass. Ten minutes, ten seconds remaining in the third quarter. Jim Snow covering defensively. Again, you took a look at Bob Greasy in the huddle. He was the runner-up in the Heisman Trophy voting and was the most valuable player in the Big Ten Conference. At the moment, he has completed seven out of 14 attempts for 73 yards. That's Bob Greasy. Number 12, quarterback for Purdue. Winslow at the moment, uh, 7 for 8, 7 out of 8 for 85 yards. 
That is Greasy, one of the local sports writers, said he's the most publicized individual since Hopalong Cassidy came here at Ohio State in 55. Completes the ball foul and drops the ball incomplete. Ball foul had it in his hands and dropped the ball. What do you mean? Right there. Great ball by Greasy. Ball trail was wide open, only in the opposite pattern. They just took off the pattern that time, but it was the play before was in the, on the near sideline. He swung out here when they attempted to throw to Fern. He was wide open, so Greasy, very alert, he came back, just flip flopped the formation and threw the ball trail out on the far sideline. He was wide open, but unfortunately, as you saw, he dropped it. So it is third down now, and once again, Bob Greasy is faced with a third down situation. He's been a clutch performer all his life. They try with draw play. Williams, he got it out to the 25-yard line. Larry Petrel and Jim Snow on the tackle. It's going to be four attempts, seven now. A punting situation. Greasy is coming off the field. Inch is coming in to do the punting. Larry Imp is coming in to do the punting for Purdue. Last attempt by Bob Greasy. He has been a good punting. So I'm sure that Jack Mullins out there, let's give him to 10. Imp gets good distance, not quite as high for a good coverage. Lawrence to see for SC. Lawrence takes it at his own 34. And as he got to the 37-yard line. So it'll be first in turn now for the Trojans with the ball at their own 37. So the ball makers offensively come off the field. Coming up soon on NBC, a two more outstanding postseason game. This Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the top players in the North meet the best of the South in the Senior Bowl from Mobile, Alabama. 40 yard kick returns three yards. In close to Mike Hall. Just to the 38 yard line. In a yard, second down in nine. Last old Trim and Clanton King made the tackle. On January 21st on NBC at the East against the West in the AFL All Star game from Oakland, California. That's the Senior Bowl this Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and the AFL All-Star Game on January 21st, both live and in color, exclusively on NBC. <laughs> Roy Winslow puts this one out the hole in complete. My goal cannot hang on. The score is tied here, 7-7 in the third quarter. The clock shows... Eight minutes, 17 seconds remaining to be played in the period. The Grand Marshal of the Carmen Roses is Kenneth Coleman right there, Jack Mollenkopf, the head coach of Purdue, having completed his 11th season as the head man, 19 seasons in all on the staff at Purdue. Third and nine. Rod 
Second and ten for the Trojans. Field marker number 49, Chuck Dial, making the tackle. 221 pounds, middle guard. John McCall is the workhorse for the Southern Cal offense. He's carried the ball 14 times for 73 yards. He's seen going off the field. We started to say a moment ago that his excellency, Tommy Coleman of Thailand, is the first person from outside the United States ever to be named from the Roses. Grand Marshall is going to quit with his time today across the way. Third down situation here. Winslow. Runs out of the pocket and is back to the ball. And the ball bobbled away from the game. It's at the third down. It's a new recovery. It's a great down guideline. The Boiler makes it catch the football. And it's bobbled away from Corey Winslow. And Leroy Keyes is the man with the ball. George Obey and Mason Tackle. Keyes recovers the fumble with a story time. This is Lindsey Nelson with Terry Bennett at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. Officially, the recovery of the fumble is credited to Bob Holmes, number 93. Olean made the tackle. Holmes recovered the fumble. Coming with 6 minutes 48 remaining in the third quarter. First and 10 at the 39. Lindsey now lost the long bomb to Burns. Three fumbles of their own and lost two. So this time the uh, break came their way. A great catch by Byrne, but he couldn't quite hang on to it. Fumbled it into the end zone, and as you saw it, USC recovered out to the 20 yard line. Touchback going the other way, USC's ball. Adrian Young, the fine all coast linebacker of SC, was the man who eventually tossed out the ball in the end zone. The 37 yard completed pass to Byrne. First and 10 SC at the 20 yard line. Now the quick pitch. Goes to John McCall. He gets only one yard before the Purdue defense stops him. Joy Golian across to make the tackle, make it second and nine at the 21. A rip roaring football game here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. And among the 100,000 fans here is a group of Vietnam veterans who are here today hosted by the Chrysler Corporation. The score is tied 7 7. We have five minutes, 53 seconds remaining to be played in this period. Troy Winslow, moving it up to the 25 yard line. Rafa and Olean making the tackle. Gain of four, it'll be third and five as Winslow goes back to the huddle. One local reporter said that when Molenkopf arrived here with the Purdue Boilermakers, he didn't say, Lafayette, we are here. He said, we are here from Lafayette, Indiana. So we're going all time back to record for U.S. Five forty three passing percentage. Winslow rolling and whipping one to the sideline. A diving catch is made. It's good. The 35-yard line to Rod Sherman, number 12. Fine catch by Rod Sherman, number 12. Good pair of hands, and a, he has good speed. He's very difficult to cover. You crowd him too much on that sideline pass, and he will uh, turn up field on you on the sideline and go. But there's a penalty marker right. on this play. A penalty marker, and the penalty is against SP. That nullifies the pass play to Rod Sherman and moves the Trojans back to their own 14-yard line. A holding penalty. Ball is on the 14-yard line. It is third down now and 16 yards to go for the Trojans at their own 14. So they go into deep front formation. 
Pat Cashman will punt from the end zone. Gets it out of there. Hits on the 40 and bounds back. A Purdue bounce that is down by SP. Miller on the ball, and Purdue gets it now in SP territory. First and 10 at the 37-yard line. It is a 25-yard kick by Pat Cashman. Don't see Seven Cal uh, quick kick very often. A quick kick on third down. I did say. Action will continue here at the Rose Bowl. The score is for New Seven and USC Seven. At the Rose Bowl in Pasadena now, the Boilermakers of Purdue have excellent field position. First and 10 at the SP 37 yard line. 445 seconds remaining in the quarter. Jim Byrne right there. No contact made. But a handoff. Moves the ball straight ahead with Terry Williams carrying. And it's Moore coming over to make the tackle with the ball at the 33 yard line again. A fourth, second down, and six yards to go. For the Boilermakers of Purdue. Purdue lost this year only to Notre Dame and to Michigan State. 14 points the least that they scored against any team this season. That was at Notre Dame. J.J. is passing across the middle. And it's taken now by Bob Hurst. Going down to the 21-yard line. Adrian Young stopping him there. It's a first down for the Boilermakers. That's the third time that Purdue has uh, looked to hit their halfback coming out of the back. He's a man who is open. The split end and flanker back have been well covered and occasionally the tight end, Griffin. But the halfback coming out of the backfield has, he'd be their fourth receiver, has been open throughout this third period. Burn is split left and Finley's flanker. Hurst is in motion. And Greasy now puts it out to Hurst. Hurst is at the 15. And he's at the 10. And he finally is down at the six-yard line. Bill Jaronson starting him there at first on the 41. They came back to the other side. They hit Hurst on a, uh, on a left pass in the, in the swing pattern. Number, number 41 is Bob Hurst. This time they swung him on the right. There you see from the end zone camera. Instant replay. Hurst wide open. Almost goes all the way in. So Bob Greasy now has 17 attempts, 9 completions for 100 yards. And even 100 yards. Erickson the ball game. First and goal at the 6 yard line. It's just Williams. And Williams powers inside the 4 yard line. Second down and goal to go there for Purdue. Nate Shaw, the All American halfback for Southern Cal and Jim Snow combining on the tackle. It's at the three and a half yard line now. Second down and goal to go for the Boilermakers at Purdue. The score is tied. They're finding with two minutes and 40 seconds. Remains to be played in the third quarter. Now it goes to the two yard line. Bob Balsell carrying it in there. Third down and goal to go at the two. Ray May on the tackle. The, the Southern Cal defense deploying. Southern Cal trying to dig in here. This is Williams and it's touchdown. Chippewa Indian dialect that's down to the valley. 
The crown is the range of Majestic San Gabriel Mountains that give the home of the Rose Queen a regal natural tiara. Keys is kicking off. And it is taken at the six by Lawrence. Lawrence gets across the 20, 25, and Jim Lawrence is filled at the 28-yard line. First and 10 there for the Trojans who trail by seven. Dick Marvel brought him down. The Trojans of Southern Cal have been in the Rose Bowl more than any other team. They have won more than any other team. They've been here 13 times before today with a record of 10 wins and three losses. The last time, New Year's Day of 1963, when they won 42-37 in a rip-roaring contest over the University of Wisconsin. It's a big Homer Williams, and he gets across the 35-yard line. Frank Burke bringing him down. Second on him, three yards to go now. Lawrence is in there in the fighter boat. John McCall carrying, and he got a body yard as Chuck Kyle. Along with Fred Rafa brought him down. Rafa from East Chicago, Indiana. Well, the big man in there was Clinton King. Uh, heard a defensive tackle who's now playing linebacker and was been a real boon. Uh, Purdue had injury uh, to their couple of their men playing linebacker, so they moved to defensive tackle. He's been a real help at 240 pounds, and he's very, very mobile. 30 seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter. Third down and two now for the Trojan. And McCall, he gets the two, first down at three at the 39. Bob Holmes from Leyland, Ohio, brought him down. The clock is running with 10 seconds remaining in the third period. Purdue leading by a score of 14 to 7. It is doubtful they'll get off another play. Two seconds, one second. There it is, the end of the period. At the end of the third quarter in the 1967 Rose Bowl game with a score, Purdue 14, USC 7. The Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California with one quarter to go in this football game that sees Purdue out in front now by a score of 14 to 7, but SC has the ball. First and 10, the Trojans have it at their own 39. Mike Colton and first of Homer Williams at fullback now. Roy Winslow still has the football. And he passes complete to Ray Cahill. First time today, he's thrown to number 26. He's split in Ray Cahill. Leroy Keyes making the tackle. Ball is at the 47. The man who picked up the first down on the play before, Don McCall, has carried 17 times for 79 yards. That gives him a 4.6 average. There you see Cahill down and out. Sharp cut. It was kind of a down and out and a hook. There you see him in slow motion trying to come back on his midfield. And this is my call trying to get to the outside. Turn the corner as Leroy Keyes and John Charles are there to stop him. A gain of a yard on the play. It'll be third down and about a yard, possibly a yard and a half to go. Ball is at the 48, and there is Mike Hall. Now Lawrence comes into the ball game, and Rod Sherman is leaving. Lawrence is flanked to the left side. Trojans need a yard. John McCall gets it and more. The guys to spare. He goes into Purdue territory at the 48 yard line. First and 10, Clanton King from Chicago, Illinois. A 240 pound sophomore linebacker making the stop. Southern Cal gets a good fake to their fullback, either Mike Dollar or Homer Williams. There you see, coming up next on NBC, Orange Bowl with Florida versus Georgia Tech. Interesting point in that game, Bobby Dowd against one of his former uh, assistant coaches, Ray Graves of Florida, Lindsay. Yes, and while they are friends, they are bitter enemies on the football field. That's coming up next on NBC. <laughs> 
Here's Rod Sherman. That's the 44 for a loss of eight yards. Second down and 18. That's the first time this afternoon that Rod Sherman has carried the ball and not very successful on uh, his first attempt. Uh, great defensive play by Leroy Keyes. He spotted that immediately and up, was up on the play. Twelve and a half minutes left to play in this game. Lindsey Nelson with Terry Bennett, the Rose Bowl, where Southern Cal is trailing by seven points. We have 11 minutes, 48 seconds left to play. SC has the ball second and goal at the four-yard line. Colin McCall, deep in the eye formation. This is McCall, and he is uh, pushed back from the five. He needs a stone wall in the person of Bob Holmes. Number 93, the defensive right in, 197 pounder. The ball is on the five-yard line. Third down and goal at the five. As the Purdue Parliamentians have thrown up a stone wall here. In the last 13 quarters of the regular season, the Purdue defense gave up only one touchdown, including shutouts of Wisconsin and Minnesota. The one TD was scored by Indiana after Purdue had them 51 to nothing. And SC takes another timeout here to get organized. John McCall just left the playing field. He got hit pretty hard because Holmes has been doing a magnificent job. Bob Holmes, number 93, the defensive right end for Purdue. He's been a fair cat all day, all afternoon on defense, and that was a good example. The AFL NFL championship game will be coming your way live and then on NBC January 15th. Kurt Gowdy and Paul Sisman will be there for the coverage starting at 3.30 Eastern Standard Time. That's the AFL NFL championship game. With Kurt Kelly and Paul Sussman. Live at this color. Jamie New York, a 215-pound linebacker. 
into it, pour it down, and go the go the ball just outside the 11. Then uh, Troy Winslow's problem throughout the year. He's a fine passer, but not too quick a foot. So uh, he gets trapped a few times back there, where Bob Greasy, on the other hand, is a fine passer, as we all know. But he's very quick on his feet, a pretty good scrambler, and not a bad runner when they have a definite uh, play called for running. Now Rosevich is in to attempt the field goal with Winslow holding a 28-yard attempt. Rosevich had one during the regular season. It is partially blocked. And it is taken by Katavlis in the end zone for the touchback. Purdue gets the ball first and ten at the 20. Frank Burke got a hand on the ball. It is a touchback and the score remains Purdue 14, FC 7. Action will continue here at the Rose Bowl with the score Purdue 14, UFC 7. Charge. Move up to Chrysler's 67. We pause briefly. The NBC for Los Angeles. This is the NBC television network. The NBC Los Angeles. Perry Williams today has picked up 53 yards for an average of 3.3 to produce fullback number 47 as the Boilermakers have the ball first and 10 at the 28. Great defensive effort for Purdue after a 52-yard pass from Winslow to Sherman and puts the ball first and goal on the 5. Perry Williams carrying and he moves it out for 4 yards to the 24 before Tim Rosevich brings him down. Second down and 6 yards to go. For the Boilermakers of Purdue. Again, they choose to go to the inside. Harry Williams going to the 26 yard line, picked up to the third and four. Dennis Moore and Larry Petro on the tackle. There are a whole host of football figures in the stand here today, of course, as is the case at any Rose Bowl game, and among them at least two former Purdue head coaches, Jimmy Fallon and Sue Holcomb, both looking on here today. to the 29 with Bob Bossell carrying number 34 in a three fourth out about a yard to go Ralph Oliver number 53 and Dennis Moore on the tackle Oliver from San Diego it looks like a funny situation here and in the third period uh, Southern Cal controlled the ball quite effectively ran far more running plays than uh, Purdue did in the fourth period once again the same thing USC has controlled the ball Purdue as you've just seen had three plays and now they're forced to punt and Bob Tracy goes back into deep punt formation standing on his 15. And Jim Lawrence, his single safety for Southern Cal. Lawrence moving up, fair attack at the 36. First and 10 for the Trojans at their own 36 yard line. Because of coaching assignments in postseason All Star games, Jack Mollenkopf, the Purdue head coach, has gone away from home for 11 consecutive Christmases. This year, his wife planted has been here with him for all the festivities. A 40-yard punt with no return on the fair catch. Purdue leads by a score of 14 to 7. SC has the ball with 8 minutes, 30 seconds remaining to be played in the close ball game. Lawrence on the table of a tandem there with Michael directly in front. Lawrence in motion. Michael gets the football. Plants across to the 41-yard line. Then his Furby brings him down with Frank Burke. Southern Cal has moved the ball well, but they've been uh, somewhat ineffective or stalled out, I should say, when they get down near the goal line. Now, once again, they have the ball. There's eight minutes, four seconds. The clock is running. They have enough time to get back in this ball game to tie it up. If they can uh, uh, keep the drive alive once they get down in that uh, ten, uh, five-yard area from the goal line. And they're trying to get out there. They bring Don McCall back in there on the table with tandem in the eye formation. Second down and five yards to go. That's McCall in motion. McCall gets the football. Two yards to the 43 before Jimmy Sturby is up in him. It'll be third down and three at the 43. Michael is a junior fullback, number 23. 
Third down, here go. Interesting part of the Purdue defense, the defense unit, as you see there, there is one uh, senior on that uh, unit, and that's George Catavalos, the captain. The rest of them are all underclassmen. There you see the shot of the Goodyear Blunt. situation here for the Trojans who trail by seven. There's Ron Yerry. We asked Ron Yerry, the All-American offensive lineman, how do you feel about playing in the Rose Bowl? Great experience my life. So well put, and it's the opinion of almost every ball player who participates here. Contact me, the Trinity Mark is shown. That's your answer. A first down. That was a seven down, a first down. They will retain possession of the football. First and ten. And it's a big break to put the USC back in this football game. And as you saw it, moved across the line of scrimmage, making contact. First down by by means of a penalty, but it still counts. It's still a first down. USC still has the ball and the drives alive. They have it at their own 49-yard line, and the clock shows six minutes, 20 seconds. Remains to be played in this football game. Ravenchow wants to make some substitutions, but can't quite do it. At the moment, they're getting another quarterback. Troy Winfo in there quickly to run this attack. They have the punting unit in. And off goes to Mike Hall, and he moves to the 46. That's a pretty good game for mass confusion. I don't think they were at all sure. I think uh, Rod Sherman figured if I just run to the left, I'll stay out of the action, and I won't bump into the quarterback. Just about what happened. They had the punting unit in the ball game, and then picked up the first down on the penalty, and... Uh, as Terry indicated, a little confusion, but it picked up yardage nonetheless. Second down, five yards to go. Roy Winslow, run to the sideline, and it is incomplete. An incomplete pass intended for Bob Miller, with John Charles covering defensively. It'll be third and five now for the Trojans of Southern Town. Winslow at the moment uh, attempted 14 passes, completed 10 to 184 yards, which is a good afternoon. Bob Greasy, on the other hand, 17 attempts, 9 completions for an even 100 yards. So once again, it's that big, big third down situation. Paul is the lone running back set with Sherman left. <laughs> Oh, gets the football, and a second effort. He was trying to get to the stick. Now, where did the knee touch? They'll bring it back to where the knee touched, and that will be a big spotting of the ball because it'll be short of the first down there. This 1967 Rose Bowl game is being brought to you live and in color exclusively on NBC from Pasadena, California. Fourth down now. Fourth down and a yard to go. The Trojans don't want to give up that football. Fourth and one, and they're going to go for it here, saving by seven points. You hear the reaction of the crowd. Do they give up the ball on downs, or do they retain possession? This is McCall, and he gets the first down at the 40-yard line. First and ten for the Trojans. will continue here at the Rose Bowl. The score is Purdue 14 and Southern Cal 7. This is Lindsay Nelson with Terry Brennan at the Rose Bowl where the official attendance this afternoon is 101,455. With Purdue leading SC 14 to 7 at this point. But the Trojans have the ball first and 10 on the 40th. Cal was taken up and came out of the ball game for Purdue. Uh, Michael Williams is in his fullback. But Winslow has the ball. He is cut down for a loss of about a foot. It is Derby making the tackle. It's been a hard-fought uh, football 
game here this afternoon, but a cleanly fought one. And actually, there have only been four penalties, two penalties in each team. And the longest, uh, there were three of them were five-yard penalties, and one was would have been a 15, but it was half the distance to the goal line because it was inside the 30-yard line. Lawrence is in the call, is on his wing flow, comes up to the line of scrimmage. He likes to call audibles up there. Second down, ten and a half yards to go. Wing flow looks and throws, and it is complete. At the 45-yard line, the Rod Sherman with John Charles bringing him down. Again, a five and a half yards on the play, uh, possibly a little less than that. Rod Sherman, number 12, fine receiver for USC. There you see him on a wing formation, wing setup. You break down and slide out in the flat zone. Well thrown by Winslow. This catch didn't have much uh, running room. He's run that pattern quite often this afternoon. I, I believe that before this game is out, he'll try that sideline and up and probably leave his man on the dust and might go for six points. Third and six at the 36 yard line. It was Winslow going on the run to the sideline. Inside the 30-yard line, and that will be. First down. There's a tough guy, Rod Sherman. He was hit. Good air. Good air. Just a replay. Washington down. And maneuver very well. He stops the four men out of bounds. Just as he catches the ball, he's up in the air, but he still hung on to it. A good, tough man as well as a good receiver. He was hit hard by Charles, but it is a first down at the 29, and Southern Cal takes a timeout. The Trojans calling for a timeout here. Action will continue at the Rose Bowl. The score is Purdue 14, Southern Cal 7. Right flag. Next charge with the best looking body that ever whistled down the pike. Chrysler 67. Uh, Pasadena, California, with the Trojans trailing by seven points. They held the ball first and ten at the 29. Out for you. Rod Sherman has six catches for 85 yards today. It's on the call. Yards on the effort, and his third is the tallest man on the Purdue team brought him down. Keep in mind that the Trojans trail by seven. This is a college football game. Two point conversion, all an option. Second and three here. Homer Williams is in at fullback. Don McCall is in motion. Roy Winslow now looks. Watch the throw. Everybody seven. So he's going to run it. Winslow throws his shoulder and he's ridden out of bounds at the 19 yard line. John Charles from Linden, New Jersey, playing a great game in the Rose Bowl, bringing it down. Smart move by Troy Winslow. He's not the fastest man afoot, but he felt he could win his way to that 19-yard line, which looks like it's the first down, and there you see it. It is the first down for USC inside the 20. Jack Springer, the referee, taking the ball to the inbound marker before putting it down there inside the 20-yard line. The Bob Hope Desert Classic is coming up on February 4th and 5th on NBC. Tune in for one of the top golf events of the year. The Bob Hope Desert Classic, live and in color, on February 4th and 5th on NBC. First and 10 now for the Trojans. They have the ball in the 19-yard line of Purdue. It's just Troy Winslow rolling and looking. Throwing deep to Sherman. Do you go for one point and try to win it? Do you go for one point and try to tie it? 
Barry Clark Sherman, number 12, finishing out his career at Southern Cal here this afternoon. Seven receptions, 98 yards to the day. A fellow from Pasadena, California, who played high school football right here. Remember the catch he made two years ago to beat an undefeated Notre Dame team right here in Los Angeles, the very same Rod Sherman, number 12 of Southern Cal. Great passing by Troy Winslow. There you see him talking to Rod Sherman. Troy Winslow, number 10, has attempted 17 passes, completed 13 for 213 yards. Quite an afternoon for Troy Winslow. He's pretty much uh, dominated the passing attack. Bob Reese, he's had a good afternoon, but not quite as good as Troy Winslow. As we saw on the screen, Rod Sherman, seven completions for a little over 100 yards. It's a decision now for Coach John McKay of the Trojans. Winslow staying in there, and apparently they're going to try for two. USC went 64 yards in 13 plays. They trail now by a single point. They're in the huddle now to see if they can get in for two points. They're going to try to win it. And you hear the roar of approval from the crowd. A third formation. So Winslow's going to throw. So the conversion attempt is no good, and Purdue retains the lead of 14 to 13. George Katopoulos, number 86, the co-captain, kicking it off. He's from Cleveland, Ohio, and Katopoulos is the hero for Purdue of the moment. And he still has two minutes and 28 seconds left to go. It was a road bowl in Pasadena where the score is Purdue 14, Southern Cal 13. Southern Cal, they went to win. They didn't play for a tie. They went after that football game. Mary C. John McKay talking to Troy Winslow. I'm sure what he's saying. But never mind. We've got two minutes and 28 seconds on the clock. We still have a chance to stay in this football game. And it will be, of course, Southern Cal kicking off. And Purdue is alertly moving up in anticipation of an onside kick attempt by the Trojans of SC. Two minutes, 28 seconds left. The Trojans want the football. That's Tim Rossovich, number 88. So Purdue has been warm from the sideline. Look for the onside kick. They are pulled way up in anticipation of that attempt by the Trojans. The Jesus man's on the 15-yard line. Oh, boy, what an afternoon at the Rose Bowl. Tim Rosovich coming forward now. Tries the onside kick and must go 10. And now the scramble is on. And Purdue gets the ball at the 48-yard line. Purdue gets the football. Got Calcaterra maintaining control at his own 48. That's going to be a battle of Purdue trying to kill the clock and of uh, Southern Cal trying to stop the clock. Southern Cal took one timeout, as you saw, prior to that two-point attempt. That would mean by our unofficial count that Southern Cal USC had three timeouts remaining, and they probably will have to take a couple of those in trying to get the ball back. And Dave Herrick is in the backfield now for Purdue. And off in close, and it is no game. Eddie King moving at. Barry Williams stacked up. Could well be at the moment. USC will probably have a nine or ten man defensive line believing that Greasy or Purdue had certainly on instructions from Coach Jack Molotov not to put that football in the air. If we have to give it up, we have to give it up, but don't throw it and give it to them. Purdue 14, 7 Cal 13 with 1 minute 42 seconds showing on the clock. Second down and 10 yards to go. The ball in with the ball on their own 48 yard line. It's is Greasy keeping to the 50 and across to the 47-yard line of Southern Cal. He picked up five. It'll be third and five. We want to take this opportunity to say thanks for all the help in the booth here this afternoon. From Joe McConnell, who's been handling the identification for Purdue for us. And for Dick Tripp, who's been handling the surgeon identification for us. And from an old friend, Chuck Panama, who is with us here this afternoon, handling uh, statistical data here in the booth. Third down and five. The ball is at the 47-yard line of Southern Cal. And close again. Trying to get to the stick with Terry Williams. He wanted that first down. He did not appear to get to it. Adrian Young. 
moving in to make the tackle. The clock shows 45 seconds left to play in the game. And now the clock is stopped for a measurement to see if he picked up the first down. It's either first or it's fourth. It isn't the first down, and I have to thank Adrian Young, a jarring back. He not only straightened Williams up, but he pushed him back. We want to take this opportunity now, as you see, it is fourth down to acknowledge the assistant of stage manager Glenn Hewling here in the booth, the chairman of the Rose Bowl Football Committee, after being the son of the Roses, Lathrop Leachman, and the president of the Son of the Roses, Henry Kearns, and also our thanks to Goodyear for the use of the cup this afternoon and the fine shot you've seen from above. Fourth down now, and Purdue's going to go for it to try to retain possession. Creasy trying to quarter by sneak. Did he get it? He got close. Perhaps the ball goes over. They'll likely measure it to find out. Jack Springer, the man in the white cap of the referee. If Creasy did not make it on the quarterback sneak, then Southern Cal has the ball. The clock is up with 21 seconds left to play, and he's going to bring that chain out now to measure it to see whether Purdue retains possession, in which case they can run out the clock easily, or if Southern Cal gets the ball, in which case they can go for the ball. If any part of the ball is in the back of the stick, it's the first down. They did not make it. Southern Cal gets the football. USC has three timeouts remaining, and so they could possibly get two or three plays in at this moment. You see the wisdom of the call by the part of Purdue not to take a chance of getting a kick blocked. The ball is still on the other USC side of the pitch. USC has the ball at their own 42. Troy Winslow now goes the sideline pattern to stop that clock, and it is incomplete. It's an incomplete pass intended for Rod Chairman. The clock is stopped with 14 seconds, stopped on the incomplete pass. Second down and 10. For the Trojans of Southern Cal are trailed by a single point in this football game. What an afternoon it's been. The boiler major of Purdue came in here this afternoon, triggered by most of the experts to be two touchdown favorites. The Johnny McKay Trojans of Southern California battle of all afternoon long. Got down to where it was a question of do you go for the tie, go for the win. They did not make the two-point conclusion. That's the margin that Purdue has, 14 to 13. Roy Winslow. Can't get rid of it. It's 